Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. Uh, today we're going to be colorizing this photo and enhancing it and we'll see what little problems pop up on the long, uh, along the way and we'll see how to address them. And uh, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Uh, before we move on and actually colorize this, I want to have a word to you about um, Google Rewards. It's an app that I use myself. Uh, being on the pension, I don't have a lot of money. So I use this app. And what it is, is you just answer a, uh, a survey. You know, usually when you drive to a shop, it will say which one of these shops were you in. You select the shop that you're in. You say uh, how you paid and it gives you money every single time you answer one of the surveys. I usually get a survey a day and I probably make around about $30, maybe sometimes more a year, depending on how many surveys it pushes. And that's what I actually use to uh, pay for the apps or some of the apps that I actually use. I don't do the subscription apps. So I don't have the money for that. Uh, so I'll buy an app outright like Pixa Pro. Uh, I think I brought, well, IBS paint, oh, it's about 14 bucks. Um, I think Airbrush as well was about $14. So uh, yeah, I can't remember which apps were paid and um, which ones were, well, I know I know Mint AI is ad revenue based. So when you use that app, they get paid via um, the ads that they push to you. I'm okay with that. Uh, for the videos, I do um, flight mode, um, to stop the ads popping up. Uh, but when I'm using it personally, when I'm doing a, a Facebook group or a website to restore someone's photo, I'll actually watch the ad. Um, it doesn't bother me and it's usually running while it's processing anyway. So we'll move on and I am going to, I'm gonna go straight into uh, colorizing this photo because there's not much that needs doing. So we're gonna open up Mint AI and from there, we're just gonna uh, pop down to the bottom and we're going to click colorize and then I'm going to find the photo in my gallery. So we'll find this person's photo. Let's see what it, um, how good it does the colorizing. Okay. So here's our photo here. So we're just going to click okay. And we're going to let that run through. Give it a minute. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, oh, that looks good. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah, we got some red on the nose and that, and we can address that. And we can see, I think this person has prior run it through a tool because uh, these lines that you actually see going down are a result of a uh, an AI, which is doing like um, scan lines to restore the image. So what it's doing is it's running down the pixels, reading the pixels, and as it's going, it's doing the restore and it's not very good. So what it's actually done is you can physically see the wrong shades because it hasn't looked at the overall picture and gone, okay, these ones need to be blended with the next line. So that looks like it's um, already had a tool run over it. So we're going to have to go through and address all those scan lines. So um, that's going to be time consuming. Um, I may I may actually for once uh, edit out that time chunk um, of erasing it, but I will show you how to do it. And if I feel that um, something is repetitive and it's just that same process, I might edit that out. We'll, we'll see as we go. So we're okay with this. The colorizing of that is actually fantastic. This person uh, tells me they had a dark blue, t uh, no, it was a uh, dark green top. So we'll address the color there. We know that they had uh, blonde hair. We'll go through and we'll uh, fix all that. Uh, eyes, we'll take a look what we can do there. I don't remember the color of the eyes, so I wing it. And at the end of the photo um, restoration, before I post it to the person, I'll just go back and I'll address that. So we're just gonna hit save. Download successful. Okay. So we'll pause the screen, we'll swipe that off. I am going to go straight into 
airbrush and I'm going to take a look at those scan lines. Um, something like that it really is a, a manual process of um, the, the restoring to it. You can't see this. I think my gallery is safe to see at the moment. It is. It doesn't have any of my family photos, so it's good. We yeah, click the plus in the bottom corner. We go to import picture. We click the little hamburgers up the top. We go image. And now we find where that photo is saved. So let's have a look. Let's save to the gallery pictures. So we shall open that up. No, I don't need the line tool. And then, now we're going to address this using the smudge tool. So I'm going to come in. We can always go to um, making it uh, almost transparent. So we adjust that, so the, um, the opacity of it, uh, size, whatever is going to fit our uh, area that we're actually working on. And we can come through and we're going to have to just usually I would fix these up before coloring it. In this case, we'll just take a look here. That's probably hair there. I'm go a bit smaller. Always follow the lines of the image. That's the uh, the only real trick to um, to doing it. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see which direction those lines are running in. So we just follow the uh, the overall hair and the way we've got that there. So let's have a look. Now these are probably going to be all over the image, which is the uh, the annoying part. So some areas will be worse than others. Just bring the opacity down there. Trying to do uh, a larger area. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's destroyed some of the um, the hair, individual hair strands that we see in the image. We have to uh, try to run a tool and uh, see what we can do about that. Bright side, the uh, the plants in the background, it sort of adds a bit of um, that optical illusion of more foliage, so leave that. We just want to get rid of the big ones, the ones that are really noticeable, that where you're going to print the picture and it's going to look like the, uh, the heads have dragged and uh, damaged the ink when it's printed. So that's what we want to go for, is just to reduce that sort of stuff. This is boring, you can just uh, fast forward and skip it. I don't know how in depth I'm going to go cleaning this. I might move forward and clean it up at the end of the image just to save time because of this is time consuming. And when I say time consuming, it would take an hour or two sometimes because we have to address it all. So yeah, we're going to leave that for now. We're just going to go through I'm going to address anything which is large. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's an artifact of, um, of a, um, an enhancer tool. I used to use one that uh, had the same thing. There's also uh, colorizing tools that uh, have the same issue. They go through and they scan, they try to uh, colorize it and they uh, create these very annoying artifacts. Uh, that's why um, I always say, if you're, uh, you might have a good result with one app, 
and then sometimes you'll have a um, a bad result of that uh, same app with a different photo. Uh, so it pays to um, use your uh, app store and find different versions and just play with them and keep the ones which are fairly decent. Now remember, you might try it on one photo and it might be really, really bad. And you might go, oh, this app is no good. I'm, um, I'll just remove it straight away. Don't do that. Uh, test it with a couple of different photos because you might find it's bad on one type of photo and it might be fantastic on another. So come through, just clean up a little bit. I'm not going for perfection. Uh, since we're going to be coloring it anyway, we'll probably address a lot of that as we go over it. Okay. Just gonna, yeah, and kind of yeah, gives that sort of hood crane effect to the house. We we're definitely gonna have to go through and um, do a lot of cleaning up on this image. But like I said, I'll do it at the end with this one. So I'm gonna save that from there. Da 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 da. Back to my gallery. Save these little meatballs as a JPEG. We will swipe out. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. When you say we take a look at the skin and we just go into airbrush and we uh, do the makeup and um, the skin textures first. So we'll do that one. So we'll open up airbrush. And go into my library, so the bottom there. Find our colorized photo, which has been worked on. Okay. Yeah, let's be that one. Zoom in on an area I fixed. Yep, that's it. Okay. So, okay. Let's go straight to skin because that's what we want to look at here. We'll hit auto and we'll see how much of the body it picks up. Press the eraser so we can see the mask. Oh, that's pretty good. It's missed some of the hand, so we'll paint that in manually. With this one, when you zoom in, that tool is uh, one size, but as you zoom in, it's a little bit better. The only downfall of this tool is sometimes where you're actually painting, it's actually just the head of your stylus. It's not the actual circle that it's showing. So sometimes you have to go over. Put our mask down to come through. On the bright side, we can actually, um, well, I can see the skin tone being applied here. So I'm happy with that. We will come in just here. So this photo will need a, um, a big clean up at the end. Okay. That's my purple we're applying. I find that uh, brownie purple that I created works really well on um, on the skin tones, uh, and it's not showing as nicely on the screen as what it really is. So you'll see the final result. Uh, I will post that up in the uh, Facebook group. I'll have to find other ways and other means to um, post them so you can see the real image. I will come through now to makeup as always. Easiest way sometimes to remove those red tones around the lips is to just use a, a makeup. Okay, so we've got that, it's covering it. Okay. Yep. yep, 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 that worked perfectly. Beautiful. Go through and do those contours. That's that 3D, adding those shadows. Come through again. There it, we'll find the one that adds the white on the cheeks. Usually young. Bring that up. It's very subtle. Done. Take a look at some of the other contours. 
the natural one usually does the uh, cheeks on the outside I'll apply that makeup tool again can we see the eyebrows under the hair ever so slightly done it's just slight we don't want to go over the top eyelashes will always define eyes apply that okay do i want to do anything else at the moment no i will save this image and i am very curious at the moment so we'll swipe that out now I'm curious to see how we can uh, um, use Facetune to colour the clothing. So what I've done is I have opened up Google and I've gone to Google Images and I have gone Green Fabrics. I've come down and I've selected a green fabric and then all I've done is I've screenshot it. And from there I have gone to that image, I have cropped it the image so it is just the green image itself uh, I actually zoomed it to the screen and um, screenshot it because uh, I found that gave me a bigger image and now we're going to go into Facetune so I'm going to open up Facetune and we're going to go to the image that we have and we're going to open it up so we're just going to find that image. Is that? Okay. And we have our image open. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at colouring this top. So we'll come through to the clothing tool. And we're going to go through to custom. And it's going to show us all the images that we have. So we'll come across and I've selected this green fabric, which is the one that I've um, taken a picture of and saved. So find that. I'm going to go to fix. And we're going to decolor the cats by erasing around them to put them back to what they were kitty face little fluff balls Gotta find the actual hard finding the body of the cat isn't it that's definitely a bum that's a definitely a little footsie with toe beans Two beans, two beans. Okay. I think is that the bum of the cat maybe? Looks about right. What else we got there? Is there more body of the cat there? No. Kitty cat, not a kitty cat. Do, 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 do. Probably use IBS paint to come through and throw some color on these cats. I've done a composite of a face on a cat in the past where the face was completely gone. To sort of black kitty here and just make sure you're okay that's good there's the leggies of the kitten oh you can see the butt of the cat or oh, cat butt come through there we go Okay, where is Kitty's tail? Nope. Looking for the tail. The tail must be up. 
Okay. How's that looking? I think that's good. It looks like it's masked pretty well to where we want it. Come through. Details. With that white coming through. Saturation. How much green do we want to bleed through? It's great. Let's have a look here. Light up a tiny little bit. Let's have a look. I think that's good. I said it was green top. Just noticed the pants have been highlighted. I'm going to whoop, de do those. There. Make sure we get the right tool for the job. Brush it in. There's no marker to say where it's going to colour there, so it's so like wing it. We go work our way up. Perfect. BEA beautiful. I'm happy with that. We will save that. Let's take a look at this hair quickly. You know, there is a tool we can open to uh, try to fix this hair a little more, and then we can use that to do a composite. So we might do that. What we'll do is we will save the image quickly. Swipe that off. And we're going to go into face app. Um, if you've watched all the videos, I've shown that one before, it, uh, the free version is very limited, but we can manipulate what it allows us to do. So we can take a look at that. We're going to open up face up. Let's come straight into my gallery. So I'm okay with that. So we'll open that up. It's loading it. We're going to come across, I'm going to go straight to the skin tool to begin with. I'm just going to throw some freckles on though, just to add some um, skin imperfections. It's very slight. That's perfect. Done. And come through. Let's check if the smile tool, um, it will composite another smile on. And that's not too different to the original. So that helps fix the teeth. So we're going to use that. We're going to apply that. And we're going to come through to the hair tool. Hair starts. Okay. First of all, we're going to save that. Saved. I'm going to do a couple of composites here. I'm going to do the long hair. Apply. We're going to save that and exit. Done. Now we have, now I'm going to go into uh, Pixay Pro. We've got a couple of images there that we're going to use to do um, a composite. Uh, one part of the composite is going to be to fix those uh, discoloration of the teeth. So that will save me having to go into uh, Paint Shop and um, remove the color. And then we're going to do the hair. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to open up Pixay Pro. We're going to go into get images and we're going to get the image before the two. So we're going to go into camera, open up our image at its full resolution. Then we're going to go effects and we're going to go insert picture. Go to the little hamburger in the top corner there. And we're going to go into face app. And then from face app, we're going to open up the one where we just did the uh, the mouth. So we'll open that up. See that there? We can see the little watermark in the bottom corner. We'll apply that. We will remove this watermark. Just erase that out with your little eraser up the top there. Nice, easy, done. Nope, don't want to save that. Okay, there's our smile. Now we're going to come back into effect again. Uh, layer, uh, hair, apply, okay, erase out, watermark, 
come back up, erase that hairline. We have no idea where we're going here. Painting what we do want. Beautiful. Come back over here, erase it until we find where our hair was. Come up here, remove that. Get the ear back. Okay. Paint that in. Brush the hair. We're just filling in where the hair was rather than rather than the uh, new overlay. Get rid of that dark shadow. Just erase that. Perfect. There we go. There's our hair. No watermark. Done. Export Pixay Pro. Yes. Overwrite the previous image. Go into Facetune now and open up that image. <laughs> Got to find the image, bear with me. It's not always alphabetical, which is kind of a pain in the butt. This one might be. JJK. I think so. Okay. Have our image here open. So we can come through and we can see that smile is and the hair is what we have done we'll go into the hair tool and we're going to uh, make the hair really pop now so we'll come through i'm just going to apply a an urban sort of color that reddish sort of brown okay you can see the before you can see the after now i always go for that darker color first to get the highlights so we'll do that apply and then we'll take a look at the blonde over top the reason i don't go blonde first is because the image was already blonding up so it can sometimes be way too much and we can see here that that is a very strong blonde and unless you're bleached you usually ain't that strong of the color that is a strong color Yeah, I think we might stick with the original. I don't think we're going to be... Well, maybe a tiny little bit. Yeah, I'll do that ever so slightly. So sun-kissed look. So what we've done is we've reduced the amount of color that's going to come through. We've reduced the, uh, the blend. So uh, there's more of the original coming through. And then we brought the glow back. And that's just going to give it that very light sun-kissed look. And we'll apply that. Okay, and we're happy with the image from here. Yep. Okay. We will save this image. Oh, wait, actually, before we do, we've already saved it, but that's fine. Notice the sky here. Let's fix that sky up because we can do that. So we click the sky tool here in Facetune, the sky tool. Okay. We can see our sky there. Now what we want to do is this layer shows how much it comes over top of the image. It basically acts like a, uh, a flash on a camera. So you can say how bright the day was and it just adds that tone across it. So it's meant to bring it together. But we're just going to take it all the way back and we're going to come across to the apply tool and the erase tool. We're just going to make sure, yeah, it is only applying on the sky. So that's good. So we can go occupy and we can see how much it's coming through. Okay, it does fade the um, sum of the leaves, but that's quite fine. It gives that uh, light look coming through. So it's great. Looks way better on my photo than it does on the screen here. Okay, we will apply that. And now we're going to have to go into IBS Paint and go manual. So, 
do some manual coloring. So we're going to open up IBS Paint. Go into the gallery. Little plus in the bottom corner. Import. Find our image. Images. It's Facetune folder, which is the one that we were in. Open up the image that we just did. We can tell by the sky there. It's the first one, so that's great. Do not need the line tool. Okay, let's have a look here. Let's come down and we're going to work in layers. So bring up your layers, the next little arrow over on the right there. Okay. Little plus underneath the image will add a new layer. And we're going to change that to color. And we're going to do some manual coloring. We'll suck a color from over here because it's not a true white. Now over here, we have wrong colors. So let's get our brush size. We'll leave it on full occupancy. Oh, this is interesting. There we go. We'll pull this white. Okay. But this white is coming up as a blue. It's very interesting. So what we'll have to do is we'll just bring it to a true white. We've talked about that before, where if it's slightly offset, you'll get that color. So for example, if it's over here, it may have that whitey tone to it, or hang on, we'll, we'll use this one, we'll pull it up. It may have that whitey tone to it, but you can see that it's on a blue layer, so it's actually pulling that blue through. So if we make it on a true white instead, we should actually get a white tone. This one's coming up as a gray, so we'll come through color, and we'll take a look at the different types of colors and see what they do. Okay, let's color burn. Right. We just have to play with this until we find one. Uh, lighten is probably the one we'll go with, and we'll reduce how much that actually comes through, and we'll drop down to probably about 15. Yeah. And then we can see that is much better on whitening up that fence. Drag it up a bit. About 25. Have a look at that. Have a look with it off. Have a look with it on. Okay, that's good. That's getting rid of some of those uh, color tones there. We can duplicate the layer and do multiple layers. And then we can use that um, this one that we're creating here as a layer mask. I'll show you what I mean second okay so we could do that and we'll get it off we'll get it on it sort of brings the fence together now if we duplicate that which is this little plus uh, in the white box and then we go duplicate layer you'll see that it is doubly as strong but now we can change that and we can go lighter color and see how that affects the image. Bring that up. Okay, and we can see that's a lot whiter. So we can build up multiple layers to affect what we're going for for our image. Okay. Might be vivid white, I think, is overpowering. No, that's not too bad, actually. Let's have a look. You've got to find that balance when you're doing the translucency to where we're seeing these lines uh, come through. So for that. And of course, we've got to account for shadow as well. Now, we can actually do a layer there. And we can pull up that grey colour. We can come over here. And we can adjust our brush down. Turn the image sideways. Two fingers, twisties. Just gonna paint that grey in there manually. Nice solid line, turn it back straight. Now that's a solid line of grey. But if we bring it down just a little bit so it bleeds through some of the under, 50%. Now we create more of a shadow that's actually on that fence. So it brings side A and side B to look like they're more uniform. 
Now let's have a look here. What else have we got in the image? That appears to be a road. I thought that was grass, but I don't think that is. You see cracks in the pavement. So layers and layers and layers. So we'll do another layer. Take a look at another color layer. Try saturation. Uh, I really want a more true. Try that. Let's have a look here. Yeah, that color works well. Bring our size tool up. I've gone for a um, the red tone and brought it into a darkish grey and I chose that because the roads have that sort of uh, dirty look to it. And with this app and the way the layers work, if I'm on a blue, it probably show those blue tones as we've seen with the fence. So we'll come through like that. Just color that in, make it smaller. To get our defined line around the edge there okay because we want to keep this image with its natural background rather than replace it the way i do in portraits which is a lot more work on an image like this and as i said earlier we'll have to go back through and fix a lot of those scan lines up as well you we can see there's like a curb there so we'll just bring it down to that okay may time lapse this so um so you don't have to watch the entire boring video but it shows you what you need in your tools and how to manually color a photo you can do this with the skin and that as well if you wanted to it's really time consuming because you gotta add the shadows and the highlights and all I can say is layers, 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 layers. Enough layers until you lose track of how many layers you've got is usually where I end up when I'm actually doing a photo. Okay, we come through. Now we can fix this weird anomaly up from the uh, color tool. Color tools aren't usually perfect. They just do a base layer. They're pretty impressive considering. Usually it sees ground. It doesn't care if it's road or dirt it's just like hey i'm gonna apply green tone to it they are what they are and they are great for giving you a nice starting point to come through and finish up your colors where it makes it nice and quick so i'm actually really impressed with the color tools there we go now we can really see one of the things when you're working on an image like this and uh, you're doing the layers and you're zooming in, you start seeing stuff in the image that you wouldn't normally know is there. So we'll do another layer, another color layer. I'll try saturation, see how that works. I'm going to pull some of that skin tone there. Hmm. Might be better as a color layer. We'll change that and we'll take a look and see how different they are to each other. That's better. We'll bring off some of that saturation to blend it in. Use the smudge tool there since it's having a what I'll call a negative effect on that shadow. Erase some of that. We'll go to a semi-translucent and we'll just Pull that out to blend it together. Smudge tool. Okay. Just fixing that arm color up. I imagine that probably goes into here. So we have to use our imagination with uh, some of it and go, well, is that arm following up into this part of the shirt here? So. Color that. 
erase, erase the areas where we go over. Zoom out. And now it looks like there's light coming on it. Car in the background. Another layer. Give that some sort of color. Don't know what that was. So we will go, I don't know. Try that sort of color. Color. We'll put the color down. We'll just color a nice section in like this. Do, 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 do. We're on normal at the moment. So we'll change that in a second. And then we'll have a look through those uh, color layers and we'll see what this does. So we'll use this and we'll basically create a mask of the area that we want to uh, change. And then after we have masked it, we will go through and play with the uh, color layers and the translucency and see what we can get. And I'll just color the window in. We'll come back and erase that if we need to. We're just trying to get a look at the moment for uh, how this will be affected with our color layers to try to make to try to make the vehicle different to the image so it pops in a different way and brings your eyes to different parts of the image it's a very yellow car let's try it okay we can see that now Ah, we can start seeing areas where we've gone over with the translucency. So we can come down and just erase that, which is some sort of wooden board on the house. Now we can come through. Windows look like they're probably down on the vehicle. See through there. Do that. A little bit on the roof, which... Okay, there's our vehicle. And we'll have a look at the different ones anyway. So we'll have a look at what's dark and do. It's not bad. Well, if we did darken and then we dropped it down to say 16%, that's actually quite nice. It, um, it adds a more realistic look to the uh, vehicle and helps hide our coloring. Okay, it turns out that is a part of the vehicle. Okay. There we go. So now the vehicle has a, a slightly different look to it. We can we can add another layer. We can go to our yellow and pull that down to a brown. And we can just come through here and mask the fairing of the vehicle and the step of the vehicle with a slightly darker version of what we're working on. And then we can come up to our layers and we'll put it on darken as well. And then we'll reduce that down to like maybe 5%. And that adds a shadow to the vehicle. Okay. So you can see that. Okay. No shadow. And then that's more of a shadow. Bring that up a bit more. So I'm just showing you how this is working. So you can see it there. So we can come through with the smudge tool. We can pull that in a bit. Push that up a bit. Bring it back down to probably about 10. And that creates shadow on the vehicle. So the light's hitting it and we have some sort of tones and light play. And you can do that on, on um, different areas of the vehicle to make it uh, pop that little bit more. So we'll do that same color, we'll go smaller, and we're just going to do that on this section here. Bring that up, color that through the roof, go to the smudge tool, bring that in. Okay. That adds a little bit of like uh, highlights to the physical vehicle itself. Come back in. Now we can create another layer. Okay. And we can see there's a, a dark tone here, which we need to go for. We need to darken that up a bit. Okay, I'll show you why. Okay, we're on brush. We want that to be small. And then we're going to follow through the door line there.
do the handle there. Doesn't have to be clean. Okay. Now we will do color. And we will drop it down until we're happy. Higher. And that's just adding a little bit of a um, a defiant shadow there. So when we're looking at the image, you can see that um, the door jam, the, the cut. Okay. Now, do we want to change the color of that roof? Probably not. Do we want to add any grass in? Probably not. We do want to go back to our road layer, which you can name these. Can't remember how. Yeah, rename layer, little meatballs. There we go. So we're going to change this quickly from saturation to normal. So we're going to remember that it was on saturation. We're going to pull our color. We're going to go to our brush. You have to remember it's on saturation. It's very important. Okay, size up. All right. I'm pretty sure that's a curb. So, and this is going to allow us to do the same thing that we did with the vehicle we're doing a mask and then we're going to change that back to saturation this just allows us to see easier what we're actually painting in okay there we go Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now we'll change that back to saturation. So the bottom, there it is, saturation, 100%. There we go. Now we got the grey road. Okay, so easy. That is how we color a photo uh, let's have a look at these cats come up to the top here add another layer i think we just there we go move that layer around because that's 76 percent it's not the one we're working on we want the 100 percent layer we will go to color got told one of the kittens is orange one of the kittens is apparently gray brush Find an orange tone for a kitty cat. Dark. All right, kitty, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's see what saturation does. Nope, it's definitely going to have to be a color layer. Pull it down. Let's have a look. most orange cats have white as well so we'll come back through and we'll erase some of this after we're done we can always change it to normal and then you can use the bucket fill and just flood different colors in until you find what you want for your kitty cat color okay So kitty cat color let's try something we're going to click our duplicate icon so if you're under the plus a little white plus there it is there duplicate your layer i would like to see what this does with darken mm -hmm. not quite what we're looking for uh, hard light maybe oh there's an orange kitty cat what happens if we pull hard light down oh not bad not bad at all okay kind of like that do another layer 
go to actually no i'm going to leave it at a normal but i'm going to bring it down to around about 20 percent let's take a look at our cap see some those whites coming through so i'm just going to go down and we're going to tick our kitty like this I'm just going to wear it white we're just going to throw some colors nope that white on mine just put some whites on there i'm going to increase that a bit for the translucency take a look at our cat take a little paw there some, just some ticks so we'll just bring it through okay okay i like that that works well Okay, grey kitty cat. Let's have a look at you. So, do a mask, black. Black out the kitty. Okay. so this cat here yeah that's definitely that cat and that cat is separate to that okay that's what it looks like to me okay let's have a look here let's play with the layer for that let's go dark color and we'll check that out first drop translucency down to about 28 nope Let's have a look here. Screen. Nope. Hard light. Hard light's not bad. Off. On. Hmm. What's hard mix do? Let's have a look here. It's not bad. Actually, it works actually quite well. I like that. Okay, so we're going to do hard mix at 21 by the looks of it. Uh, maybe a little bit darker. I'm assuming if I pull it up, it's going to go black. Yeah. Not the best layering system. Okay, there's a dark kitty. Dark kitty would still have light colors in the fur. So we'll do that normal and we'll drop it down to about 28. And then we're going to come through and find a light grey and do what we did before so check the size of that around the eyes nose bring that up pause wherever there's some sort of light coming on it okay smudge bring it in A harder kitty to color. There we go. Follow that light. Just adding some light. And another layer. And black again. Black kitty cat. Be careful with this one. Black is actually really hard to recolor or to enhance because you can lose the features. Actually, I do know a trick for that. Let's try that. Let's have a looky here. Back to my gallery. We'll save the image. I mean, we're almost done here. Other than the fact that I do need to go through and clean up meatballs. Save as JPEG. Okay. Just going to open the image up in airbrush quickly and we're going to take a look at it in there so we we'll open up airbrush <laughs> ok 
Okay, we have our image. We're just going to come through and we're just going to go under the makeup tool. And we're going to come through to the eye color for a moment. I'm going to take a look at these eyes and see if we can just show a contact on the eyes to give it the pupils and definition. I'm not fussed on what it's going to look like too much. I am after a base look. Okay. Because I will use Facetune to get the colors that I want. Okay. That will do. Whilst we're at it, we're going to go through and we're going to reapply some of the contours. Do that contour. I want young to add some of those whites. I definitely want to go to the eyebrows again. They're a little bit too light there. We have a thicker style eyebrow. Bring them up. Doesn't match. That matches. Okay. Makeup again. Eyelashes. Bring in some eyelashes. Done. Okay. We're going to go through to the skin tone. There's some graying up the top there. We're going to manually brush in color. And try to blend it with the image. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. Take a look at that. Bring it up. And we just need to find the tone that's going to blend it with the image. To white. Actually, it's not too bad actually. Okay. Bring that down. We can actually use that. Use it as a light reflection. So we can color it to give the light. Just like that. Okay. Just got to find the right tone for it. Gray color. Yeah, that will work. More color. Okay. Okay. Yep. Take another look at skin tone. So if we can't brush it up a little bit more. So build layers. Okay, done. Okay, that brings it in much more. Come down there, across there, and under there. Yep. Done. Okay, happy with that. Save. From there, we'll go into face tune. Do, 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 do. Okay, now we have our photo. That is the one that we've colored that's got the eyes on it. So it's in the camera gallery. So we can come through and we can color our eyes up now. We'll apply a black to it. We will try to bring out the whites on the sides there. And we'll apply that. There we go, that gives us that greenish tone doesn't look as good on the compressed image cast there but looks great on the phone now we're going to come through to the clothing tool and we're going to erase everything okay done make sure that's erased and we're going to go brush and then we're going to brush the cat in as weird as it sounds little kitty cat Little black kitty cat. Erase. We have masked the cat. We're going to go details. Pull back the details. Trying to hide some of those scan lines a little bit. Now we'll go to 
pull back the print, which is going to darken our kitty cat. Okay. Go to saturation, pull the saturation back, darken our kitty cat. Pull the black back, darken our kitty cat. Now we have a nice dark kitty cat before and after. Now we, we can take a look at that again. And we will apply it to the grey cat in the same sort of manner. And we're going to play with it just to bring out the details of the grey cat. And then we're going to try it again on the orange cat. So we're going to use it as an enhancing tool. So we colour our kitty cat. messy but that's okay we'll come back in we will erase what we don't want no, no, I do want that bit there that's a bit of kitty cat okay we good yep perfect All right print pull that print back details leave the details up on this one saturation Orange kitty cat, black kitty cat. Let's have a look. Darker. Okay, let's have a look here. Before, after. So it's adding the shadows to it, and it is darkening our kitty up significantly around the face area. And um, doesn't stand out as much on the compression. Uh, it was an issue with the cast. You will see the final result if you're on the group for Facebook. <laughs> Let's have a look at the orange kitty cat. Erase everything. Simply using the clothing tool as an enhancer. Color our kitty cat in. Just going to go to print because I can't see what it's doing. We're going to change it to dark. It's actually fantastic right there. That's probably where we're going to be keeping it, to be honest. That is nice. Dark kitty cat. Works for the shadows. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll bring that up a little bit. Go through to that. Details. Balance. That's making these details pop. We'll keep him as orange. Okay. Beautiful. That's really enhanced the kitty cat. So see, that's the before. And we're using it as an enhancement tool for the kitty cat. And there's the after. Okay, so we can see more of the details of the cat by doing that. Done. Okay. There's not much else to do with this photo other than to go through and manually clean up scan lines. Close that off. Open it up. That's Facetune that we were just in. So we'll find the Facetune folder. Okay. And there's our final result image here. Okay. So without using PaintShop Pro, uh, it may not be almost as good, but it still is very capable of doing the job. And the longer you spend doing on a photo, the more you get out of it. Um, this looks way better on the phone than it actually does on the screen. Um, you can see, you will see that if you're in the uh, Facebook group, uh, free photo restorations and how to do it. Um, so yeah, that is our photo. We will, um, finish it at that I'll go through and try to clean up some more of those uh, scan lines um, I mean the last thing that we could do is open up Facetune uh, Pixay Pro sorry we will go to our gallery go to the Facetune folder Facetune open it up and we can add our vintage shadow, which I find hides a lot of 
it just blends things together it hides um some of the um the work if you know what i mean so that we've done so it's not as um noticeable with how we've gone about and fixed things it brings things together so we'll apply that to the image and we will save that say pro folder we are done that is our image so remember to like subscribe get the bell on leave a comment below um, if there's something you want me to do a video on or to concentrate more on um, and yeah we will see you in the next one